Welcome to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Uh, today is January 19th, 2022, and this is the second oral history recorded for the project. Uh, Kurt, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Kurt, Kurt Bowen. Uh, I'm a writer, and I, I've been uh, writing about uh, urban culture for 40 years. All right, great. Thank you, Kurt. And we're really happy to be here, really honored to be here with Coast TDS, the legendary style master affiliated with TDS, uh, AKA the Death Squad. Um, and Coast is also a longtime Bronxite, really uh, pre almost from birth since he was age three. Um, and Coast has his art in a lot of places already. Museum of the City of New York has, has the largest collection of his artwork. He's been interviewed, received a lot of awards, just received recognition. Uh, from uh, from the Bronx for all of his contributions to uh, uh, hip hop culture in general, particularly uh, around uh, graffiti writing, and we're just really happy to be here with Coast. So, um, Coast, we start out these oral histories by asking, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family's history and background, and how y'all ended up in the Bronx? First and foremost, I want to thank you, Stephen, and you, Kurt, thank you for even giving me the opportunity to express myself in give you a little brief history about who I am. And with that being said, um, well, my family came from Puerto Rico. Sure. And they came here in the late 50s. And see me, I have three sisters. And all of us were born in Manhattan. Me in particular, I was born in Mount Sinai Hospital. Sure. That's on Fifth Avenue on 99th Street. And I, didn't, I don't have no recollection of those days yeah. as a baby. But I know that I came to the Bronx in, at around three years old, like you said, a little while ago. Sure. And so basically, that's my background. You know, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican roots. Um, they call us New Yorkans. Sure. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. But, um, you know, this is what society, they give us these labels. You from here, you from there. You know, I guess this is the way we separate each other and different cultures. But, you know, I guess there are differences. Yeah. You know, we're from Latino to uh, um, European cultures, African culture, but it's all the same thing. We're all human beings. But basically, you know, um, I've been through a lot of stuff in life, you know, and um, I've been in the Bronx since I was three years old. Um, I went to Morris High School. Okay, yeah. Um, I went to PS 154. Um, that was a public school, elementary yeah. school. Junior High School, um, Burger, I asked 139. But for the most part, when I graduated from, to go to high school, I went to Manhattan Vocational Technical oh, High School. okay, okay, yeah. That was my first high school. That's your first high school. But this is when I started um, writing graffiti on the trains. Sure. And this is where I met um, a lot of the other um, legendary artists, graffiti artists that I, I met. Ben, in fact, I'm using the word graffiti well, word graffiti was not even um, in our vocabulary, really. Sure, yeah. You know, us, we called each other writers. Yeah, 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 and that's how you, you speak know, about it. You huh? know, graffiti is um, it's a word that was given to us by the powers that be. Yeah. You know, vandalists, graffiti artists, you know, yeah. it's a Latin um, roots to that word. Sure. And, um, but we called ourselves writers. But, you know, just for conversation, I'll use the word graffiti. Sure. But I just wanted to, you know, clarify that. But um, yeah, uh, if I knew what I what I knew now back then, who knows where I'd be right now? You know, I, a lot of my stuff is not even documented. I have very few photos. I have you know several photos of me on trains as a kid, you know, with pieces and some inside bombing. Sure. But I had a lot more work. I just didn't. You know, I was just a kid. You're just writing. Doing it. You weren't thinking about documenting. Running, it, yeah, right? I wasn't thinking of none of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you know where um, in Puerto Rico your mom and dad's families are from? My father's from Ponce. Okay. Okay. Sure. And I believe my mother's from Aguadilla. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. other family come over uh, to New York with them, or did they, they they both came by themselves? Do you know? I'm not really too clear on on that, but yeah. I know most of my family lives in in New York. Okay. Like my aunts, my uncles, you know, they all in New York. My cousins. Yeah, in, yeah. in the Bronx or kind of spread In the Bronx. I have some in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where where was the first place you all lived in the Bronx? 
know? Yeah, 130. It's not too far from where we're at now. Um, okay. One block over. Um, we lived on 136th Street between Willis Avenue and Brown Place. Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And how, how long were you all in that um, apartment? That apartment, I can't really recall. I was really young, but I, I, I wasn't just, I'm just going to um, freestyle. I'm going to sure, um, tell yeah. you that um, I would say about five years, maybe. Yeah. yeah and so then from yeah. there, we moved to the next block, which is on 137th Street. There's 416 East 137th Street. Okay, yeah. And I remember real clear, we lived in 4B. And uh, my mom's worked in the youth center there. Oh, okay. And we stayed there for like maybe seven years. Yeah. I'm just guessing, but um, then we moved down the block to these little houses, um, like about a block away on 137th Street, which is Brown Place, where we currently live at now. Wow, yeah. And I've been there ever since. It's been like since 1978, maybe. That's crazy. 77, yeah. 78. Yeah. And I'm 55 years old. Yeah. So you do the math there. That's how long we've been in that. Yeah, particular so residence. And what what were what were the apartments like? Do you remember do you remember much about like um, who lived there? Were you friends with neighbors? Um, uh, how many stories there were? Things like that. Little details. So I come from the era where they called it the boogie down, burnt down Bronx. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. was a lot of abandoned buildings. I remember when I, we first moved from 136th Street, which was a tenement building, slum. Sure. And then we moved to a nice building, like one of the city. Um, um, NYCHA buildings. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was a real brand new building. Yeah. But across the street, it was weird because it was like nothing but abandoned lot. And you can see 138th Street right through. It was no buildings there. That's crazy. It was yeah. nothing but junk, you know, like the the average stuff when they call the Bronx the Boogie Down, Burnt Down Bronx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. you had all this stuff. And and during these areas, these are the origins of um, graffiti and, and hip hop and all this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So we, uh, <clears throat> we're talking about like early 70s, right? 70 early 70s, like 73, 72. I was a kid, a little kid. Right. Yeah, yeah. Did you all um, go to any of the, the parks that were close by? Not really because my mom didn't really allow me to do that because she worked in the community center. My yeah. mom was a, a staff member there and they had a, a nice program there and she didn't allow us to go nowhere. So we would go there and that play program. in the in the community center. Sure, yeah. And she was an employee there, so we used to go on the trips upstate. Yeah. Mohansic State Park, Bear Mountain, um, Seven Lakes. Yeah. Well, they used to take us to all these parks. But I was the one that, while everybody else was swimming and it, I was the kid that used to go into the woods. Oh, okay, Look under okay. the rocks and get snakes and yeah. I was always an animal lover. I, in sure. fact, I own a skunk now. Oh, really? Oh, that's crazy. And, and wow. a spider and a tarantula. So I've uh, always been into exotic animals. Yeah. But I was that kid that was always like, you know, looking in the woods and, you know, while all the other kids did the normal shit. Yeah. I was in the fucking woods with my friends looking for frogs, <laughs> salamanders, you know, newts. All that stuff. That's funny, yeah. Garden yeah, yeah. snakes, water yeah. snakes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, did did your family did they ever go back to Puerto Rico and bring you? you no, I've never been to Puerto Rico. Never been to Puerto you know Rico. what's funny? I'll make you laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um I've been to China, but I never been to Puerto Rico. <laughs> My ex wife was Chinese. But, okay, um, sure. I was over there for a little while. I've been to the Great Wall of China. I've seen Mao Zedong, you know, the first communist leader of China. I went yeah. to the mausoleum, seen sure. him. I wanted to take pictures. They don't allow you to take pictures oh, of him, though. Okay, okay. They have yeah, these yeah, military yeah. guys there, and they... He died in 1976, yeah. and they still have him preserved like he's still alive. He, can, he looks like he's asleep. Yeah. But they have, like, a like a, a bubble, like a fiberglass thing, and they dip him in this liquid every night. Oh, okay, okay, wow. And, you know, they you can't take no photos of him. Sure. You know, they're right there, and you can just look at him and keep moving. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I was over there for, like, almost four months. Wow. And, you know, but I've never been to Puerto Rico, and I want to go there one day because that's the origins where my, my roots are, yeah. my family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, what kinds of things would you all do for fun around the neighborhood? I Obviously, you spend a lot of time in the community center. Did you ever, um, you know, play any of the street games? That's easy, playing, yeah. That's like easy. That? Yeah. We did um, Ring Olivia, um, yeah, yeah. Johnny on the Pony. Um, okay, yeah. Kick the can, run, catch, and kiss with the little girls running around the block, manhunt. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, the girls did the, the hopscotch and double dutch. I remember the girls doing that. Um, what was the thing on the floor? Skellies. Skellies. Oh, Skellies, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. stuff. I remember those real clear. And I used to ride my skateboard all the time. I was good at it. I used oh. to do handstands and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was pretty good at that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and uh, you mentioned the, the schools you went to already um what was your experience like 
at each of those each of the schools that you went to? The one that really sticks out in my mind is Manhattan Vocational. Yeah. Because that ties in to what we're doing this interview for. It basically, you Absolutely. know, who I am is in a Bronx site and graffiti art. Yeah. Um, this is where, because there's a kid from my neighborhood that went to that school. His name is B O O T B. Okay. okay. B O Rock. He's another graffiti artist. He's a little old. He's like two, three years older than me. Yeah. He's the one who took me under the wing, and he scored a man vocational. Uh -huh. And he took me to the layups. The layups is where you go to the train and write. Sure. You know, during off peak hours. Sure. We had the skeleton keys, and he took me to the layup, and we destroyed the train, bombed the train. Yeah. That's the, you know, the graffiti on um, lingual. Sure. But um, yeah, he took me to the layups for the first time, so I was like, I got hooked. I was addicted. Yeah. And other graffiti yeah. artists I met, and and my advocate was LK, um, Scam One, um, Slim. Um, so many. I just can't re remember all of them off the top of my head right yeah. now. But, um, yeah, I, I was, like, going to steal spray paint, all kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, cut class. Yeah. Instead of going to class, I used to be in, in the park sometimes smoking weed. Sure. And going, let's go to the bench. Yeah. The graffiti riders bench on 149th and Grand Concord. We sure. used to all meet up there. And it's funny because I was a bad kid. I was one of the ones that was playing around with guns. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was just, just a graffiti artist. I was sure. the kid that used to play with little, getting 25 automatics and all kinds of guns and going to the layups. Because back in those days, if you went to like the one tunnel, there was a crew called the Ball Busters. Mm -hmm. Or you go to um, um, the Espionards, the 2 and 5 line. Yeah. They had MPC that was capping them. Oh. And they were predominantly white guys. And they uh. were like... Try to take your spray paint or was always like, I ain't Better taking shit from me. I'll like fucking that. go in there with my gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... It was T-Kid Ball Busters? T-Kid was in a Ball Buster that I don't know of. Okay, I know. Nah, ball Busters from the Bronx. Yeah. I mean, from Manhattan. No, they're from Manhattan, Manhattan. Broadway. Manhattan. 137 in Broadway. Uh, Broadway. Uh, yeah. And, and these, these white kids that would, would chase up, would, did they write too or they just... Yeah, write? Cap. Okay. You had Cap. You had um, Rush. All the MPCs, Morris Park crew. That was uh, what, that's the Morris acronym Park for it. Sure, sure. But, um, you know, we didn't get along with them. They didn't get along with us. And, yeah. you know, we ran into each other. It, was, it probably would have been a fight. Yeah. I never really ran into them. But yeah. I still went in You're there ready. with a bunch of us. It was a bunch of us little fucking, you know, kids, you yeah. know, graffiti artists. But Because yeah. um, Coke 2 was in that mix too, right? Coke yeah, he was in that era. I knew him too. Yeah. But um, what's funny about it is that, yeah, the, the story, I, I, I lost my train of thought. I came back. Um, I was at the bench one day. And by me telling you this, I'm not I'm not happy of what I, 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 things that I've done. Sure. I'm not proud, but it makes me who I am. You sure, know, absolutely. I have to say this before I say what I'm going to say. I've always, I've always was told the harder the struggle, the higher your calling. Yeah. And I'm a little emotional right now because I've been through so much things in life, and uh, my cousin knows. You know, my cousin right here. You know, I know I know what it is to smoke crack. I know what it is to fucking smoke angel dust. That was my primary drug. Yeah. I know what it is, man. I know what it is to go to prison for shooting somebody. Yeah. Attempted murder. It was um a self defense. I was a youth offender. And like I said, I have I've made a lot of bad choices. Sure. So one day we're at the bench and this kid comes up to me. Yo, what you write? What you write? I said, what you write, bro? What you write? And this was during the sheepskin era. All of us had sheepskins, British walkers, and yeah. those were the stars table. back, the playboard. Yeah. So he came up to me, and I said, let me see. I took his black book. Yeah. I took my 25 or I took his black book, and I took his um leather bomber, leather leather and goose down. Sure. I took it from him. And I, years later, my friend, one of my friends that grew up with me from high school, scam. He said, yo, you know that they shot at you out on the radio, right? I said, what are you talking about? He said, nah, it was on the radio. This guy, his name is Fat Man Scoop. You know who that is? Fat Man Scoop, he's a yeah. famous DJ yeah. and a producer. And he's obviously like a millionaire now. Yeah. He's real yeah. famous, yep. Fat Man Scoop. If you don't know who he is, do no, research no, no. on him. And um, he said that, thank Coast TDS, because he's the one who robbed me at the bench and changed the course of my life because I thought I wanted to be a graffiti artist. Yeah. 
Yeah. And when he took my stuff from me, I just went to DJ and I, I, that wasn't graffiti wasn't for me. Yeah. And he said, if you have any, any help, you know, he could come see me or, or whatever. And I'm like, so my friend told me, I said, I don't trust his ass. You crazy? Yeah, yeah. He might try to fucking set me up or something, yeah. you know, for what I did to him. But, you know, these are things that you do, you know, like what I've learned is that every choice you do, every decision you make in life, it affects your future and affects others. Yeah. It's not yeah. about me. It's not about me no more. Right now, today, every choice I make today, nowadays, I got to think about the repercussions of my actions. Sure. So... I've come a long way, you know, I've evolved, you know, and you see I got emotional for a minute because a lot of things are like, I'm not proud of things. Sure. But you know, I don't regret them because it makes me who I am. You know, I got all this experience that's allowing me to move to the next level. Yeah. And I'm consistently trying to um, um, plant good seeds yeah. in the art community, in the art world. And obviously it's something is working for me because look where I'm at, I'm here. Yeah. Being interviewed by you, Stephen, and and a good friend, um, Kurt, he helped me get a solo exhibition, and that's what I want to do. And you know, the universe, I believe in the law of, laws of attraction, and I, I, some people call it, you know, Allah. Some people call it Buddha. Some people call it Jesus. I call it the Source. Yeah. You know, we all vibrate as human beings, and we all, you know, what you put out, you get back. Sure. You know, that's just the way it is. Sure. So at. Uh Manhattan Vocational, did you uh, aspire to like graduate, go to college or something like that? What were, what were you, what were you thinking in high school? Did you think you was going to be like, uh, get a job somewhere? You know, what was, what was you thinking outside of just, you know, just going to school? You know, a lot, a lot of people, you know, they have ideals of what they want to do. You know, um, did you have an idea of what you wanted to do when you got out of high school or that kind of thing? I'm glad you asked me that question because me and Steve spoke a little bit about that. I touched on that before the camera was on. Yeah. Um, all throughout my life, I saw myself as a, some kind of leader. I always saw myself talking to masses of people because I enjoy talking. I love talking. If you leave me, I'll talk to you all day. Yeah. All day. All right. Um... And I've manifested that for years. I've been always visualized it. I've never been the one that a lot of the guys I grew up with, they would say, oh, I just got a job as a doorman. I got a good job. Yeah. Oh, I got a good job in maintenance. You know, people from where I come from, to them, those are good jobs. Me too. Me, yeah. Yeah. me. I did messenger too. That's funny because when you speak about messenger, that was my first adult job oh, at 16 okay. years old. I worked for fleet messenger service. Foot, go foot. On foot, yeah. always yeah. foot. Yeah. And, um, but I'd never been comfortable in that. I've always saw myself in a suit on Wall Street or something like that. But my, my original dream was to be a, a, um, a zoologist, to oh, deal with animals. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. You know, and, and oh, I, yeah, I told you, Steve. You were exploring the woods. Yeah, so, yeah, age, it was so, in yeah. my blood. Um, and it's still in me. But um, my passion right now is art. But that was my dream. So I've made choices in life that I don't even know if that would be a realistic goal for me. But I've always educated myself. I'm awakened. I am not part of the sheep. I am not a sheep. I'm a wolf. I always tell people I'm a wolf. I'm a predator. I'm an eagle. You're not going to just leave me or just tell me anything. If you tell me something, I want to know where you get your facts from. Yeah. What book you read it, and when I see that book, I want to know where he gets his facts. Just because you wrote a book doesn't mean that it's true. For you sure. know, I do cross research, and I've always been that way. I just can't see myself like that. So that's why when I decided to get clean off drugs, which is seven years now, and I started doing my artwork, I'm now my own business. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur now because that's what artists are. And it feels good, you know. I'm still a work in progress. I just got my passport the other day, like about a couple of weeks ago, because I lost the other one last year. Yeah. You know, I'm in the process of doing, you know, making some moves. I want to go overseas, Europe. Absolutely. And stuff like that. Um, I want to go to Egypt. That's my dream trip. Egypt. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. go see the Sphinx. I want to, you know, I want to go to the Giza Strip. That's my dream trip. Yeah. Um, 
but I want to travel wherever I can. You know, my girl, she's from, her family's from Sweden. Sure. She's Swedish. So she's in Florida now, but we're, we're making plans to go to Sweden. And, you know, that's basically it, you know. Okay. All right, nice, so nice. Um, it's, good, it's good time for me to get into my, uh, the question, my question, right? Uh, I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, maybe more. just a couple more questions right. about, about your time growing up. Um, uh, so what kinds of music do you remember hearing either in your household or on the streets in your neighborhood? Um, what are some of the things that you heard while growing up? Primarily was a lot of oldies but goodies. Oh, sure. I sure, remember sure. my father, my dad. He had um, this wheel to wheel. <clears throat> Damn, I'm old as a motherfucker, ain't I? We got one over there. There you go. You See, I'm old there. as a motherfucker. <laughs> real, real. I just reviewed my. I said it already, but <laughs> damn. So I remember that shit, and my father used to play like the Delphonics, okay. Temptations, Stylistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the oldies but goodies, you yeah. know, from Motown. For sure. And um, Gladys Knight and the Pips, you know, all yeah. this stuff. And then I used to hear a lot of salsa music, too, oh, from sure. my father. You know, because that's a lot of that stuff is Puerto Rican roots. Even though it was, um, like I told you, I do a lot of reading. So salsa was invented by African in Cuba. Mm, sure, sure. However, you know, Puerto Ricans took it to that next level. Yeah. But it was invented in, 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 in Cuba by African. African slave. Sure. And, um, you know, if you listen to salsa music, a lot of the beats are African beats. Oh, absolutely. You know, a lot, even a lot of the um, so-called Puerto Rican um, language, they say Spanish, but a lot of the words are African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. bamboo, that's sure. an African word. Sanku, which is mosquito. Sure. That's African. All those African roots, because we're not a pure B race. Yeah. We're yeah. multicultural. We're, we're European, African, and Indian. Absolutely. It's called the Arawak. Some people, if you speak to an average Puerto Rican, they might tell you a Taino. Yeah. But there's really no such thing as a Taino. Taino comes from the word that when when the um, Christopher Columbus first came to the, um, to the oceans and went to Puerto Rico, and he met the natives, the first words they spoke to him was Taino. So he just assumed that's what... what that's what he thought their name was. Himself, All yeah. that means is peace in their native tongue. Yeah. They were the Arawaks. That's sure. their original name, which they migrated from Venezuela like 2,000 years ago, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. Through the all through the Caribbean. And yeah. then in Cuba, they're in um, um, Santo Domingo, sure. which was yeah. called Hispaniola. It was yeah. not even Santo Domingo, it was Hispaniola. And then you got Cuba, but all those people are the same people. Yeah. We, um, what happened was when he got there, I'm giving a history lesson. Um, when he got there and they said, Taino, oh, these must be the Taino. Like, I'm gonna give you an example. In New York, a lot of African Americans, they hear they, back when I was growing up, they used to be like, "Oh yeah," they yeah. used to hear say, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. mira." Yeah. They didn't know they was, oh, these are fucking oh yeah. or the mira mira. You mira mira ass nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what they did to to the Indians over there. Oh, Taino, this must be the Taino. So they they stood with that, but they're yeah. the Arawaks. That's yeah. what they call themselves. And the real name of Puerto Rico was Boarding King. Oh sure. That's Absolutely. what the um, Indians called the island. Yeah. The Europeans couldn't say it, so they just... You know, what happened with the, the word Puerto Rico comes from Ponce de Leon. Because mm -hmm. after Christopher Columbus claimed Puerto Rico, stole all the gold, and enslaved the Indians there, and then brought African slaves after he killed a third of them, of the, the Arawaks, he brought the African slaves. Um, he abandoned Puerto Rico for 15 years. Then Ponce de Leon came, and then as soon as he got to the port, he said, Ay, que Puerto Rico. All it means is, oh, what a rich port. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it became Puerto Rico ever since. But their real name is the Boarding King. Sure. That's what the Indians named it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this is another just general house, uh, question about growing up. Um, what kinds of food do you remember eating while growing up? Oh, rice and beans, yeah, and chicken. Yeah, That's yeah. like typical Puerto Rican shit. Absolutely. You know, I said, oh, pork chop, <laughs> yeah. gandules, you know. Um, you know, aguacate, you know, sure, stuff sure, like sure. that, avocados, you know, but, um, you know, lettuce, tomatoes, but, um, but the most part is rice and beans. Yeah. That's a lot of, um, um, either by themselves or sometimes with a different meat. Yeah. Cetera, a lot of the guys cetera. will say, you rice eating, bean eating, motherfucker, you know, like we used to joke and yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rice and bean eating, Puerto Rican, you know, shit like that. Yeah. You know, like we say to the African American, oh, you collard green eating, you know, like yeah. African American like the collard greens and we like rice and beans, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the Italians, the, the, the yeah, weenie snacks, ass, snacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's the snacks, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We all got some kind of name for different cultures. It's Absolutely. funny. And then they will sometimes call you Mullen, some kind of name. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that joking man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but course, some people yeah. don't like the mother part, but it, it, it will come up sometimes. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll give you another history about Puerto Ricans. Yeah, sure, sure. Go so a lot of people don't know. Puerto Ricans, we open doors for all Latinos in New York. We are the most powerful Latin race in New York. Yeah. Um, the first Hispanic or woman justice is what? Sotomayor. Yeah. She's Puerto Rican. Yeah. The first um, woman to earn a million dollars for a movie is Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. In awesome. fact, she's the richest Latin woman in the world right now. And then, um, but we did a lot of things anyway. That's not to show off or whatever, but I, I'm real prideful of, of my culture. Yeah. So we opened a lot of the doors. So, what was I saying this for? Um, I lost my train of thought. What was the reason I was saying it? So, so a lot of pay. We we're, we're migrants. You know, a lot of the other Hispanics they 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 kind of envy Puerto Ricans because not only do we speak English, um, we speak both languages, and we don't need a green card. We're yeah. migrants. Yeah. We're not immigrants. We're migrants. For sure. And, you know, Puerto Rico has never been free. Yeah. Ever. Puerto Rico has been a colony for over 500 years. Yeah. Puerto Rico used to belong to Spain for 500 years until the Spanish-American War of 1898 when Spain ceded Puerto Rico to the United States because Puerto Rico, what a lot of people don't know, and a lot of people do know, that it's a military strategic point. Yeah. Puerto Rico is an important piece of land is only 50 and 35 minutes um like 100 miles long 35 or 50 miles wide very mm-hmm. small but it's a very important thing they have the biggest um tele- satellite telescope i mean satellite antenna yeah it's the yeah. rate in the world and um but you know what's unfair what i say about Puerto. i don't know why i'm saying it but Puerto Rico, they some people want it to be a state. It's a commonwealth. And what I don't like about Puerto Rico is that even though we're we're citizens, a Puerto Rican can be drafted to the United States military. Yeah. From Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. However, a Puerto Rican in Puerto Rico cannot vote for the president of the United States. Yep. To me, that's like real fucked up. I know. You're a citizen, but yet you can't vote for the president of the United States. Yeah. But yet you could be drafted to the military because yeah. we're a so-called territory of the United States. But you know, that's you know, controversial. But um, what you gonna do? I, I don't even know if that, that little small little island could really govern itself. Yeah. It was a time when they did with the sugar cane and all that. But you know, the, you know, American corporates came over there. They went to Cuba. They went to a lot of places. You know, that's what um, the big um, colonialism, whatever you want to call it. Um, he who conquers writes history. Yeah. So I know this. For he sure. who conquers writes history. So this is why I always read my own books and did my own research. And everything you read in the history book is not always true. Like I said, he who conquers writes the history. Definitely. So you have to do your own research and you have to awaken yourself because nobody's going to awake you. Nobody's going to tell you, you know, you uh, mainstream academia and over here is not going to tell you the real truth about the way things should be or the way things are or how they got there. And that was just me. I was always inquisitive. Uh, uh, inquiring minds want to know. I always wanted to know, so I always did my research. Yeah. And I still do research. For sure. Yeah, most, most places aren't, aren't even going to teach any Puerto Rican history at all, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and the stuff they do teach is going to make the U.S. look good, typically. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, well, uh, I think, um, Kurt, if you want to go ahead and, and ask uh, some questions, and we can always circle back around to some earlier part, parts of, um, uh, of, of your childhood, uh, course, if, if, if it makes sense to do so. All right, so we'll primarily deal, be dealing with uh, style writing, mm-hmm. right, to art. You know, and so, well, what was your first introduction to style writing? Again, that was like in the early 80s, like 81. 
when I went to high school, that's when I really started riding trains. You know, like riding on the train because you know I was in junior high school. I didn't have to take a subway. Yeah. So you, you As weren't much. you weren't uh, you didn't start with black books or you didn't start with the markers. Absolutely, we start. I started. Look, I started in 1979. Okay. Writing graffiti. I was writing in the in the buildings and in the walls and spray painting, you know, the school bathroom. Sure. So you so um, you started with with both both tools. So you was using the marker and mm -hmm. spray paint early on. All of that stuff, you know, yeah. pencils, everything. I don't Whatever care. You could find. Whatever I could find to write my name. Yeah. I did it. Dude. High school is when I made the transformation to become a a, a graffiti artist on the train, graffiti yeah. writer. Yeah. Going to layups, going to train yards, creating pieces on the outside of the train. Yeah. Fucking up the trains. Like, yeah. So much that in 1983, I got caught by Hickey and Ski. Mm. And I was put on the Daily News as being one of the most prolific graffiti artists in the city that year. 1983, I was 16 That's years crazy. old. I never forget it. Wow. First time ever going to jail. At 16 years old, I did 15 days in jail. And I had a small article on the Daily News. Coast TDS was picked up to that fleet messenger service. One of the most prolific graffiti artists. I, I can't quote it more word for word. It's a very small article. And I wish I had it, but I, somebody told me I can go to the library and get it somehow. Yeah, I'll look, I'll look the for archives. it. I'll look for it. But it's in the Daily News in 1983, and that was my first time ever going to jail That's for crazy. everything, for vandalism. Okay, so um, okay, so where'd your name come from? That's funny. So my first name was Gap1MGA. Mm -hmm. That was my first name ever. And I wrote that for like about a year, year and a half. And, and so when, when I got into high school, like I said it was in 79 when I started writing my name. Yeah. Gap on MGA. And as I went to high school, MGA, I just... But MGA crew? That was my, that's my crew. What was that crew name? Ma the acronym is Master Graffiti Artist. Master Graffiti Artist. Master Graffiti Artist. That is the name of the crew, and that's my crew. Is that I'm okay. the president of that crew. You're the president of that crew. Uh, yeah. like neighborhood? Neighborhood kids, yeah, you know, it's local stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, this yeah. was like I wasn't, I was nobody. Yet. I was just beginning, you know. Just beginning, all right. Yeah, you know, writing in the buildings and shit like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. So but yeah, um, yeah. When I went to high school, like I said that's when I started writing the coast, and I wanted another name. So my favorite soap was Coast, uh, C O A S T. You know oh, that blue and, and light blue yeah, soap. Yeah. Yeah, like I still got a bar that, that somebody gave me one the other day. Yo, you want this coast? Yeah, they, yeah. Knew, they knew my history. I don't yeah. use that shit, but I got it over there. <laughs> yeah. But that was my favorite soap at the time in the early 80s. Coast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the 70s. Yeah. And coast, 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 coast. So that's how I got my name. Okay. Because yeah. of my soap. I, I put C O S C instead of C O A S T. Yeah. I used coast. Yeah. And on several occasions, I wrote it with a K. Uh, but I always stood with the C throughout the years. Yeah. Because I found it more appealing. Right. You drawn more to <clears throat> those letters? Yeah, C-O-S-C. Yeah. Yeah. C-O-S-C. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so you, you, you talked about the art supplies. Um, just talk about how, how do you... Uh, well, let's, let's do this first. When did you first spray paint a train? You know, if you have just an estimate... 1981, I can tell you automatically, you 1981. 1981, okay. Yeah. What was the experience like? It was cool, man. You know, it was cool. You know what, what was cool about graffiti? When we would do it and then be at the bench or on Brook or whatever, 125th train station and, and the train were pulling. Yeah. And you just fucking hit the train last night on a layup and the mm -hmm. fucking shit pulled. Oh, shit, look. <laughs> look at my shit. I just did that last night. Or look inside the train, you walk in the train and you see your fucking name all over the car. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. little do they people know that that was you that rode on the fucking <laughs> train. And we was like, we was excited. Yeah. And it's, for me, like graffiti is a form of um, um, attention getting and fame. It's, we always call it fame. Yo, I got mad fame. Yeah. Fame. And I guess everybody in human, human society wants some form of recognition or fame. You know, or somebody say, oh, you did a good job. Somebody... Even when you raise kids, you tell them you did a good job and you reinforce that, we just, it feels good to, to be recognized. Yeah. Especially in a part, even though back then we was recognized in a negative form, we were called vandalists. But within our little culture and our little circle, we was happy. So, yeah. in that culture, 
it was a lot was about style and how good you could write your name. Mm -hmm. So, in, in terms of that, how what was your experience with other members in the community in, in writing your name? Because there was a lot of guys that became famous for writing their names. So, did you have associations with any other writers? Obviously, you did TDS, and we'll get to TDS. But what was your experience inside the community when 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 the talks were about style? I mean, obviously, you, you're, you're hitting the train, but you want people to know you have good style, right? Mm -hmm. So what was your kind of philosophy behind the art when you're writing your name? Okay. That's, I like that because now I can clarify things for you or for whoever's watching this. Yeah. Coast TDS, like I told you, I started in 1981 hitting the trains. Yeah. I did a couple of collaborations a lot of throw-ups. Yeah. I wasn't the one that got to the point where I did a whole lot of burners. I'll give you some names. You got right. Scene. Right, You right. got Mitch 77. Right. You got Lee. Yeah. I, I, I like fucking idolized these dudes when I was a kid. Yeah. I wanted to do things like that, but 1984, I caught an attempt murder charge. And I did four years in prison. Mm. So my little graffiti career when it was making that transition to art galleries, I've been to Fashion Motor. That was like the first graffiti art gallery in 149th Street in the Bronx, 3rd mm -hmm. Avenue. Mm -hmm. That was like the first. You know, I see crashes stuff in their days, yeah. things like that scene. And when graffiti was being recognized as an art form, when they were making that transition, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was in prison. I yeah. went to prison. 1984. Oh, okay. April of 1984, I caught a 10 murder charge. Yeah. And everybody knew, yo, fucking Coles, you call everybody. My name was all over the place. But I didn't get to evolve to what a lot of other artists or graffiti artists did, like to do these big, nice productions like Knock on 67 Star Wars. But I had to play catch up. I, I feel like I'm, I'm in a form of catch up phase right now. Yeah. Okay. Because I left it alone. Remember, I went. I came home, I started selling drugs, consuming drugs. I forgot all about graffiti, art. Yeah, people still call me coast and stuff, but I, I stopped that for years. Yeah. You left the culture. Yeah, a lot of the guys that I know, seen all these dudes, some of them, a lot of them, they never even did drugs. So they they doing big moves. They making twenty, thirty, forty thousand $40,000 for a painting. Yeah. If I didn't make the choices I made, I might have been there now already. But, you know, like I said, the harder the struggle, the higher your calling. I'm on a comeback trail. It's been going on seven years um, that I've been creating my canvases, doing my exhibits and stuff like that. And I mean, everybody knows I have a name, but I, didn't, I, I, I can't sit here and, and tell you, yeah, I made this fucking dope-ass piece like Lee did. or I didn't get it. My, my stuff was cut short yeah. before I was able to um, really evolve to that. You know, no, that's good. That's that's what I, uh, I was saying because I, I I know this this culture it's 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 prominent because it, it's associated with art, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the the bombing of the trains of vandalism, but still, it was you know Donnie's they laying down art, right? Mm -hmm. You know they they showing they could paint, mm -hmm. right? In this in this creative style, mm -hmm. so writing your name is very very important, right? Mm -hmm. So. That's that's all I was I was kind of getting at. So um, let's let's talk about TDS. When 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 did you uh, become a member of TDS, or was that back, or was that recent? Or I became you know, a member like, yeah. of TDS yeah. like in 1982, around there. And the one who um, initiated me to TDS was Bear 167, mm. TDS. So I'll give you a little history on Bear. Bear used to call me his little brother because mm -hmm. he had green eyes just like me. He was African-American, but his guys were green like me. He was yeah. real big. Yo, yo, he's had this deep voice. You know, God bless his soul. You know, he was smoking angel dust like I was smoking. And he threw himself off the roof yeah. a long time ago. He passed away. But he was the one who brought me into TDS. He used to say, we used to go racking. And I used to be this little 130-pound kid. And I used to stand behind him because they were scared to touch him. Like, they were seeing that we had spray paint. Get the fuck out the way. Yeah. Don't touch my little brother. Used to, we used to walk out the store with spray paint. Yeah. We would go to um, supermarkets like in Jersey, and Hoboken. Yeah, yeah. They had a path marker then. They had spray paint. 
all in the aisles. I okay. used to go over there and steal spray paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but he's the one who introduced me to TDS. He was like the enforcer of TDS, because the original prez of TDS was Chain Three, but Chain Three became TMT, and he let um, Cool One Thirty One. He's the prez of TDS, and then part TDS is the vice prez. But Chain Three was the original prez, you know. But um, yeah, and Bear One Six Seven was considered like the enforcer of TDS. And he's the one who brought me into TDS. And uh, you meant, did you mention what TDS mean already? You said it was no. It, it means the Death Squad. Okay. TDS, the acronym is the Death Squad. Did, did that have to be like when they mess with your crew, you guys were dangerous? No, oh, I, I just, don't think it's. Just made it, I, just said, I, I wouldn't. Just I would to have it. to ask Cool One Thirty why they named it the Death Squad. But you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm gonna make an educated guess. The Death Squad. You know, back in the day, we said, "Yo, that shit is death." Yeah. Oh, yo, yeah, that like fucking it. yo, that shit outfit, is death. That outfit, shit is death. Yeah, you know, I used to talk like that. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That means you, you know, you nice. Like, nice. That's what yeah, I believe yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, okay. yeah, but you could all sense. also misinterpret and say, oh, the death squad. Somebody that doesn't know, they'll be like, the death squad. Oh, shit, you better be scared. <laughs> they kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the death squad was like, that's yo, that's death. That's that's fresh. That's how we talk. Yeah. No, no, that's good. That's good. No part part. He's still painting today, right? Yeah. Part one. Yeah, all right. He does stuff all the time, yeah. All right, great. And uh, Chain 3, I saw him last summer. So uh, He's the original Prez, him. He's the original Prez, okay. But he, he's not no longer Prez, he's TMT now. TMT, yeah, yeah. He, he came to paint, the, um, I saw you that he came to paint the memorial for Case 2. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, I saw him that day, I was there. He was there, that's mm -hmm. why I saw you, yeah. So, um, uh, okay, so, so the, when this, when, when graffiti started getting noticed as an art form, you was kind of I was in prison. Was in I was in prison. Form. Okay. While well, these guys were traveling to Italy, Paris, yeah, making that transition, yeah. right. they were not doing what I was doing. Like I told you, I was not just a, a graffiti artist. Yeah. I was a stick-up kid and yeah. slash drug addict. Yeah. Because I was smoking angel dust in those days. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't smoke crack yet. That was after I came out of prison and and that crack era was introduced. Like cause Crack, I didn't even know what that shit was. Yeah. I was hearing about it when I was in Rikers Island in 84, because it came around that era, 85. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I was yeah. hearing like, oh, this one is selling their VCR. They, oh, what the fuck they talking about? Then I yeah. started selling it. That's how I introduced myself to Crack. I started selling it when I came out of prison. Yeah. And one day I was like, I seen the way they were acting. I said, like, let me try this. Shit must be good. What are you motherfuckers fighting over the stems and all that? Yeah. And I tried it. And, you know, the rest is history. But, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the crack the crack wars were terrible, man. Terrible in New York City. Uh, so, if I get this right, while you were in prison, you didn't write in your black book. You didn't even think about. No, I drew. I used to draw all the time. I wrote my name, Coast. I did a lot of drawings in in, in jail because yeah. I did a lot of envelopes for guys. I used to make money off it, commissary and stuff. Okay. Because I was always artistic. Yeah. So did you? Okay, so. So you have a black book here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you that one in a minute. You want to see it? Yeah, huh? see. Let's get, good. Yeah. Let's get going. Man. So I have this black book. This black book is very historic. I have a couple of guys in here like Say City. I got FDT 56, Say, you know, Polk, Baby Rock, Revolt, you know, guys Rift tagged it the other day. So this book is funny. You know why it's funny? Look, 2016. This is when I started to get clean off drugs. Oh, wow. And I started... um. Um, drawing, drawing. I didn't do no canvas yet. I just got myself a black book, and I was still getting high. In fact, yeah. When I first got this black book, yeah. okay. I was still smoking angel dust and creating all these pieces. And then eventually, I went to a rehab, and then I was making a transition. So I started doing these kinds of pieces, like one day at a time. It's an NA um, um, talk. Yeah. One day at a time. If you have one leg in the past and one leg in the future, you'll piss on today. Yeah. Think about it. So I was doing stuff like that, you know, stuff that were like, that was like um, thought provoking, and I was going through a transition, and then I, then I would say, you know, smile and let the world wonder why, you know, despite, you know, um, what I was going through, but I was in recovery, but I was smiling because, why are you laughing? You know, you 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 did drugs and you this you that you a loser, I still laugh. Let them wonder. Cause I'm not gonna be like this. I'm not gonna die a drug addict. Yeah. 
you know, 2014. See, this one is 2014. Patience is a virtue. Yeah. I would write like like thought provoke things that I was going through at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, feel the magic. You know, from the old school to the new, the Death Squad. You know, I was high when I did this one, 2014. I was mm. high still. So that's my partner. This is the guy that brought me into the layup. The one I told you, B.O. Rock. See, from yeah. my brother, Clean Coast. He works in Whole Foods. He's out of the culture. Mm. But he's, you know, he tagged my book, see, MGA. Yeah, 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 MGA. But I got yeah, all the yeah, guys. Yeah. All and the that was squad. your crew, right? Yeah, it's my crew, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I got all these, you know, all these people that I, I did, you know, the longevity, you know, that's for the duration of time, let it rain. I was still getting high on this one. Yeah. You still and, you get know, the old yeah. school style, which is, it, yeah. almost, it almost looked like you did it in the 70s. You know, like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. The revolution will not be televised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was inspired by Public Enemy from yeah. Yeah, you know, sure, brother. The revolution will not be televised. Don't believe the hype. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, stuff like that. I would, you know, just write shit like, only the strong can survive. I was still like in transition here, see, 2014. Yeah. Right. Only the strong survive. Like I was still thinking, I was thinking about, I'm not gonna die on no fucking drug addict. I'm yeah. not. I'm gonna fucking make it. And you know, I, I, as I went along, I just kept creating stuff. I was high as a motherfucker on this one. Okay. I'm friends, remember Rihanna? I'm friends with the monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I wrote that here. I'm friends with the monster. Where well, I was high as a motherfucker, wilding out, look. Cash was everything around me, why ask why? I read all that, and that's yeah. not fair. But these are all pieces that I was creating. This is my Latin King roots. I put Latin King, I put the five point crown, and the song sure. could survive. I was still getting high in this too. And as I, I went along, I just went along, man. Concrete Jungle 2016, Urban Affairs. I did a piece with my real name here, Anthony. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, my yeah. government name. And. So that's 2015, see, 2015 right there. Yeah. But yeah, I did all these drawings straight from the hood, you know, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. this. <laughs> I got all this stuff, man. Like, I got a lot stuff. of the sketch. It really is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, this is when I was in rehab. I did the pyramid and the all seeing eye. Sure. And then I wrote motivation, power, success, 360 degrees. There's a lot of some stuff in the Latin King lessons where it says 360 degrees strong and knowledge, understanding and respect. Right. And then I put the question mark yeah. because I was like, am I really 360 degrees? Yeah. yeah. Strong and knowledge, understanding and respect. You know, these are things, you know. And that's my daughter's name, Destiny. But all this stuff I got, all this stuff, you know, the coast piece with the Puerto Rican flag sure, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so a lot of the sketches that I got in there. I got T Kid in there, a little tag with T Kid. Yeah. Okay. And then I got some pieces that that Delta did for me. My partner Delta, he was in prison, and he made these and sent them, mailed them to me. These two pieces oh, wow. that Delta wow. Two did for me. Wow. wow. Yeah. But um, I still have, man. I hold them dear, you know. But that's like my brother. Yeah. Uh, me oh, yeah, and him have a lot of history. That's what's good about. We have a lot of history, you know. A lot of the sketches I got in there, but you know. This, this, this was so good about you for know, the most part. Is the, is the is the camaraderie, the love between the other writers? You know, I mean, I mean, all not all of them are best friends, but when you have a group that you know you, you work with and painted with, it, it's like. You served in Vietnam together, and mm. you know, just that love that always be there, you know. Mm. And, and that's what I like about you know, working as, as a journalist in, in writing culture. I just like to see that love between the writers and uh, sharing the history mm -hmm. for, for the art form, you know. So, uh, now that's great because now I kind of understand like your background a little bit. And I mean, why, why you mention the, the Latin Kings, can you? Talk a little bit about that, or you do you want to? Yeah, yeah, I can talk about it real brief. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, it was 1997, and I was in Rikers Island. Remember, I told you my favorite subject is history sure. and psychology. Yeah, yeah I've exactly. always be, been pretty well spoken and pretty knowledgeable. I'm a self educated person. Like I said, I've been to academia, you know, I've been to college. I never graduated. I went to Hostos Community College. I went to Monroe Business Institute as a junior college. Sure. But I never, you know, completed because my drug use. And I was in Rikers Island, 
at this moment in time, 1997, and I was in a housing unit, and there was a Latin king next to me. And back in them days, the bloods outnumbered um, the kings. Yeah. And he was the only king in the in the housing unit. And we used to talk all the time. And I used to educate him about Puerto Rican history because one thing about me is I love history. And I know a pretty, pretty nice amount of history when it comes to Puerto Rican history, even Roman history, um, Greek mythology. I'm yeah. into all of that stuff. You know, ancient Sumeria, the first known civilization known to man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Mesopotamia and all of all that stuff. And, and I used, we used to build, me and him. Yeah. And he said, you sure you're not a king? I said, a king? I ain't not no fucking king. I'm yeah. not into that fucking gang shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, no, you, it's not a king. It's not a gang. It's not a gang. Yeah. So he kept being intent on telling me that it's not a gang. But I always thought it was like a gang. Sure. Until one day, you know, he, he said, yo, I'm going to give you some, some stuff. I want you to look it over, and then I want you to make a decision then. Because he had told me that it was not a, it was not a gang. It's an organization for the upliftment of the commu Latino community. Yeah. Latino community, right? That's what it, it, it's supposed to represent. So I read what I read. I like what I read. And when he said it was a, for the upliftment yeah. of the Latino community, I'm with that. Yeah. You know, I, I know all about the young lords. The young sure. lords were fashioned after the Black Panthers. If you look at their mm -hmm. uniforms. Mm -hmm. They had the red hats. The Black Panther had the black, same hats. Yeah. Yeah. They took over the church on 101st, 102nd over there yeah. Yeah. and fed the community because we were not, they were being oppressed. Yeah. So, you know, one of some of the most famous um, young lords are Geraldo Rivera. Sure. He's a journalist. Um, Pablo Guzman, another oh, journalist. Wow. And there's yeah. the other one. There's one Juan more. Juan Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez. So you know your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These well, were young lords. No, 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 no. Felipe he's a Luciano. singer. Felipe, he's yeah, the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Luciano or okay. something like that. Yeah. 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 Those are the most famous ones. And I'm going to have to say this now that I'm on that subject. What I know, not what I read, or part of has to do with what I read. What I know is that in society, there are dark forces in the top 1% of society. For sure. Some people might call it Illuminati. Some people call it Masons. Mm -hmm. Some people call it, um, you know, whatever you want to call it. I know that there are dark forces that are pulling strings. You know, like you have a president of the United States. He's nobody, really. He's just a mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. They have people behind the scenes that are the real puppet masters. They're the ones who do these, um, writing these speeches and tell them what to say, what to do, and how to do it. With that being said, when you get to a certain level in society, when you awake yourself, people are watching you. You're being watched. And I know that when you educate yourself on a certain level, certain forces are watching you, and they're paying attention when you get to that certain level as you move up that ladder. And most people... In certain societies, I'm gonna use that. In certain secret societies, they they recruited out of Yale or Harvard. They get the brightest and, and most intellectual minds, and they recruit them there. You know, you got the Skull and Bone Society. But that's something else. But um, what happened with those guys is that they got so educated and so um, awakened that what happens is they give you a piece of the pie. Now you shut the fuck up. Yeah. Fuck the young lords. Fuck you know fighting for the people. Here's this. You're a journalist now. He shut the fuck up. You got a piece of the pie, and that's how they shut you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, people like Malcolm X, and that's a whole other story. You know, Martin Luther King, they're famous guys, but after a while, that's what they do. You know, people, and it's really not even a racial thing, really. It's, it's a top 1% thing, because not all the top 1% are Europeans. Yeah. You know, you got the most famous ones like the royal families and stuff like that in England. Um, but the top 1%, are, you know, you got Muslims and they're all in that class. And they all have their secret meetings and the secret, you know, the, you got the Bilderberg group and things like that. But the point of saying what I'm saying is that when you get to a certain level of knowledge and education, 
when you get into conversations with people, <clears throat> with certain people, they're going to be, all right, he's one of us. Mm -hmm. He's one of us. My hair stand up <laughs> when I say that because once they see that you're one of us, they have to give you the respect. They have to respect you, man. You know, you got Mason Day when they talk about, oh, you a traveler? Are you a traveler? Mm -hmm. That's like telling another Mason, are you one of us? You know, and they have these, you know, hand signals. And but it is what it is. For me, I consider myself Illuminati because I'm educated just like them. And I know. I don't know everything. I'm still, you know, researching and learning. and <clears throat> But I'm on my way. I'm manifesting a lot of things in my life. So let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about what you've been doing the last uh, five or six years. I, I met you um, at one of the group shows and mm -hmm. uh, had some of your work out. So what's, uh, what's, what's your vision a little bit for uh, the future? Uh, you know, obviously you love painting. You express, you know, the art, the art and you love graffiti art. And so what, what, what kind of, what's on your journey next? going forward as far as art is concerned. Now, what I'm doing with my art is that I, um, art primarily is my passion right now. I have to say this for to get this really understood because there might be somebody watching this that might not understand what I'm saying. So I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Remember what I told you, right? My favorite subjects are psychology mm -hmm. and history. Right. Human nature. Human nature, yeah. So with that being said, all human beings, somebody that tells you different, they don't know what they're talking about, are creatures of habit. Yeah. We all have habits. Right. Too much of anything is no good for you. Too much water is no good for you. Too much sugar is no good for you. Too much TV is no good for you. Too much computer is no good. Too much reading is no good for you. Life is all about balance. You have to find that delicate balance. What balances you might not balance me. Sure. That's what makes us human. So art is my passion, and it helps me be a balanced human being. Yeah. It might be for somebody else, it might be acting. For somebody else, it might be writing. But you have to find that delicate balance because we're all creatures of habit. We all have habits. You just can't too much. Too much of one is no good. You have to find that balance. So, that's basically what it is. For me, it's like my, my art, it helps me become, um, it makes me, I feel like it, it's like I feel more whole, more satisfied, and less stress in my life. It makes me feel good. Yeah. And if the money doesn't come, but my goal is to level up and get to those big galleries. I want to get to the um, Christie's and those galleries. Okay. In fact, I went to a show not too long ago, a Banksy show. I took my, my girl, Leia Sands. She's an artist also. She's in Florida now. She'll be back on the 27th. We went to the Banksy show. And this one guy was like, oh, what the fuck you doing there? Banksy's a fucking uh, this, that. But when I look at this guy's work, this guy's work is amazing. It's high-level stuff. His thought process. See, what people don't understand is it's not about or it's graffiti, you about your name, but you have to look at the art and a real intellectual, a real person that appreciates art, they're gonna know your thought processes. Mm -hmm. And when I look at his thoughts, this guy is real up here. When yeah. it comes to his thought process, he's awakened. And that's what I look at. You know, when I look at somebody's art, I don't even gotta know you or talk to you. I've, I'm gonna know more or less what kind of level, of what, how you vibrating, or yeah. what your thought process is. Because art is your perspective, the artist. And I love to do it, and I know I'm gonna, I'm, and I, I'm gonna get to those high galleries. Yeah. A good friend of mine, Cope too, he's got a show right now, what is it, Christ, Christ, Christie's? Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, what's the name of the gallery again? It's, uh, I think it's either Christie's or Sotheby's. Sotheby's, yeah. that's the one. That's what I, was... I think it's Sotheby's. So Sotheby's get there, Los Angeles. Yeah. you made it. Yeah. When you have work there, you made it. Yeah. yeah. That's the cream of the creme right there. That's the top of the... It gets no better than that. Yeah. I want my artwork in, in the Hamptons, um, Beverly Hills. That's what any artist wants. Okay, so what are your thoughts about how... You know, this, this art form that began in these urban neighborhoods, 
started off as vandalism is now a global art form from here to China. Everybody's admiring this 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 urban culture thing that started. And what are your thoughts being involved with that when it first started? It makes me feel really, really um good that something that was born from oppression mm -hmm. to be one of the most sought out things in the world right now. And it's like a, a, a um it is finally recognized. You know, we finally get to make a living off it. You know, you got guys that are making livings off it. You know, yeah. guys, Coke too has a nice house upstate off art. Yeah. Sells art. He has his website. That's my next move. I'm going to get a web when Leia comes back from Florida. I'm going to um, open a website because she knows how to design them. So I'm going to do it. If I got to pay $30 a month for maintenance fee, I don't care. I just, I need, because people, I need people to take me serious. Yeah. Because I'm here for the long haul. I'm not here to, oh, I'm just tagging here. No, I'm here for the long haul. Mm -hmm. So when people see what you're doing, I create, I paint every day. Every day. That's my addiction. That's my addiction. That is my addiction. Yeah, yeah. And I've evolved. I, I finally developed my style now. I have this style called the Outside the Box series. It's like an abstract, the ones I've been doing lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to come to a form, a, a place where that when somebody comes in on an art gallery, yeah, yeah. that's close. Yeah, automatically. That's close. Right. Yeah. You, you have to get that niche, you know, that, yeah. that. And and I have to incorporate, I'm mean, have to um, incorporate my name. I have to, um, what it, what's they call it? Um, Copy. Trademark my Trademark name. name. Yeah. 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 I need to yeah. do that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to, that's my next, that's another thing. You know, but um, yeah, when I sell my art, I have the or, or certificate of authenticity authenticity I, I got the stamp I bought that so when I sell my art now she helps me out we have a laptop and she prints everything out I stamp it and it's authentic that's what real top artists do yeah because collectors want that they don't want you you just sign your name no they want the certificate of authenticity as well as the signing on the back after right? signing yeah, on the yeah, back yeah. and yeah. all of that because yeah. there's a lot of um, there's big money in, in fraudulent works Yes. Absolutely. You might yes. say it's a Keith Herring and it's not a Keith Herring. Somebody duplicated it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, both uh, when you first started writing and kind of in this mo most recent phase of your art, what do you think some of your biggest um, inspirations are? Uh, either could be other writers or it could be, you know, uh, artists working in other genres or formats. What? What are your biggest inspirations? I like that. That's a good question. So my friend, my close friend, Delta Two. Yeah. He doesn't really like to go to shows. Sure. And he's always like trying to like tell me, oh, I don't, don't want to go to those shows. I don't go. I I don't just go to graffiti shows. Even though my my origins are graffiti art. Yeah. I go to all kinds of art shows. Sure. Yeah. Because I'm on the I'm on the um, I'm gonna use the ghetto word on the grind. Yeah. I'm on the grind, and yeah. I'm always. Networking. Yeah. I'm always wanting to meet new people. Look, I would never met him, but I would have went to that art show, that play. I don't even remember where I met him at. Yeah. But I would have never met Kurt. See, that's why I did my first show. Oh, okay, okay. My sure. first show in galleries was there, one art space. That's crazy, yeah, yeah. And I'm always willing to talk. And if you want to know something, why you did it, well, let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's build. And I gravitate toward people like you guys, intellectuals, always. Even when I was in jail, yeah. guys used to look at me, you you a fucking you a fucking tough dude, but what the fuck you doing hanging out with those nerds over there? <laughs> because I was always a bookworm. Yeah. I like that. I wanna know how you think. I already know how you think. I wanna yeah. know how the intellectuals think. Yeah. That's me, that's just yeah, been me. Right, right. Yeah. And it's just it is what it is, man. That's that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah, do you have a, did you start out using like a particular kind of brand as far as the spray paint goes? Uh, why don't you talk about like the tools you were using both the graffiti then days? Now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's an easy one. Um, so back in my, my early days, my graffiti days, you no know, vandalist days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our main spray paint we used was Krylon. Sure. 
Rustoleum. Yeah. And Red Devil. Sure. Yeah. Those three, those are the top. Those are three, yeah. I don't know all the, you know, if you got cheap paint, I don't remember those. But yeah. the main ones, Red Devil, Krylon, Rustoleum. Rustoleum yeah. was kind of thick. Krylon was literally like the best one. Yeah. But, you know, nowadays you got, you know, Montana. So you got so many different ones. Um, mm. But, um, Molotovs, you know, you got all different brands. But, um, we used to use the, the Uniwides, the, the Pilots. Uh, we used to use the Supermarket Inc. and make our own market with the fucking school <laughs> erases, you know, Beauty with rack. the fucking deodorant <laughs> thing. We put ink in this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I remember all those days. It was crazy. That's crazy. But, man. you know, it's, it's amazing the way we've evolved, man. You know, like, I was in um, Blix yesterday, and I got some tips. I brought this because I know you guys are going to want me to take a tag somewhere and yeah, document yeah. it. But I brought um, some tips yesterday at Blix yeah. that you can replace. And when I'm creating my canvases, I'm always like, needing new tips. Sure. But, you know, I'm all continuously learning. And I'm always, you know, wanting to know why or what. And, you know, I don't care. You know, such thing as a dumb question to yeah. me. Yes. You know, I remember when I was a kid. Well, that's a stupid question. I don't, I don't believe in that no not, more. No such thing, yeah. It might be stupid to you, but it's not to me. Yeah, yeah. But Butch yesterday was talking about how they would have to go into stores because they weren't selling caps separate, and they'd have to, if they needed more caps, they'd have to go into stores and actually take, you know, caps off of different aerosol cans. But now laugh? you can get hundreds of caps for, you I'm know, laugh. I'm going to make you laugh. No, we used to get it from the starch. The spray oh. starch. <laughs> you know, we used to yeah. iron your clothes. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. we used to use for fat caps in That's the 80s. Oh, okay, okay. okay. All right. Sure. All right. Yeah. Now, nowadays, you can go to our supply store and get the fat caps, buy them. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. you know, we, we invented a lot of that stuff. A lot of the, you know, that's ours. Yeah. Right, that's your culture. The Minorities, that's you know, this is what yeah. we, we created yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. And now these corporations took advantage uh -huh. and they created, you know, but you got to have the means and in, in the, in the funds to do that, you know, yeah. to create your, your own thing, you know, corporation and develop things. But those are our ideas. It's like, give you another example, rock and roll music. Those African Americans uh -huh. invented that. Yep. But, you know, a lot of the, you know, white guy, you know, Elvis Presley, you know, but... Anybody that's educated knows that African Americans invented um, rock and roll. Yeah. And now you got hip hop, and hip hop is, you know, nowadays is hip hop is different too. Hip hop is so much materialism nowadays, and, and you know, gangster rap, and it wasn't like that in the beginning. In the early um, infancy of um, hip hop, it was, you know, dancing and, you know, feel good music, you know, like yeah. let's break and, you know. But now, it's all about who got the biggest cars, and you know, I guess it's a form of evolution, though. I can't get yeah. mad at that because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, guys that are from the hood, they, they get into hip hop, and they make it, they get their first house, they buy a Ferrari, you know, they feel good about it, you know. Yeah. And I guess that's what rap or rap or hip hop is what you're feeling in the moment, yeah. Yeah. and what you're going through in the moment, you know. So, society is different now, so. You know, some people complain. I can't complain because it is what it is. It's part of the evolutionary process. You must evolve or you die. The minute I think I know it all, I'm dead. Yeah, That's the beginning yeah. of death for me. So I'm always going to try to learn something new every day until I die. I'm going to try to always learn something because the minute you think you have all the answers, that's the beginning of death for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, did you have a particular train line that you, you would like to... Uh, do your writing on? Six line. Six line. Six line. I'm a six line legend. And where six would you write okay. along the six? Did, did you have a spot, uh, like in a station? Like which station? All right, we did St. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Westchester Square, Middletown oh, Row. Sometimes in the wintertime when they put the layups, the layups when they park trains off, off peak hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put them in the tunnels. So uh, they would put them in Brook Avenue, Cypress Avenue, 143rd, 149th, to Longwood. Yeah. We used to go every fucking day. Every yeah. motherfucking day. We used to, with my skeleton key, we used to make our own skeleton keys too. Oh, with the that's file. What we do. Okay. Right. In fact, I got a couple of pieces now that I just created and I put resin on it yeah. and I put some skeleton keys in it. You'll see them in Solo Show. That's okay. crazy. But um, I, I create stuff like that, you know, stuff that's, you know, part of who I am and my perspectives. 
but I remember doing that shit every day. We, I, after a while, my mom used to bust my ass. I used to come home with ink all over my head. <laughs> oh, okay. So you yeah. know what we did? We got smart. We started getting the, the surgical gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would throw it away afterward. My mother didn't know. Didn't know. In the beginning, yeah, yeah. when I was coming, let me see your hand. My mother, <laughs> he said, motherfucker, he said, fuck me up. Bust my ass. <laughs> So I had to, we had to get smart, wear surgical gloves and then throw them away. Yeah. Let me see your hands. All right, Ma, I didn't call it the train, but yeah. It's, right. <laughs> it just came, ring, right? just came <laughs> from a layup. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You don't realize how young you guys were. Yeah. I mean, you're really, really young. 14, 15, 13. You know, I, I think Butch said he was 12 mm -hmm. when he did his first whole car. You know? Mm -hmm. So, no, that's, that's, that's amazing that... Uh, you guys were, were doing it so young, and um, so what's, I mean, you already talked a little bit about where you're going in the, in the future. Uh, um, are you doing uh, any upcoming collaborations with anybody or stuff like that? Or? So I got an idea. Remember I told you I didn't get to um, express it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leia, my girl, told me it's going to take me a while, and she's right. It's going to take me maybe more than a year. So you tell me, nobody has thought about this, trust me. So I got some canvas at home. I paint every day. So I'm doing the outside the box series, the style that I created. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing these trains, subway series ones with trains on them. And I'm doing a collaboration, I did it with Riff. One with Riff, he's gotta finish his side. And I thought about it. I've been um, networking with some guys, I, I'm Butch too. I got Boots 119, these are pioneers. I'm from the golden era of graffiti. The yeah. 80s was considered the golden era. Yeah. The 70s was the pioneers. Mm -hmm. right, A pioneers. lot of those guys, they didn't, you know, they wasn't really that artistic. They have a few, like Riff, they, they had some yeah. style. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the 80s is when that shit was the golden era. That's when it revolved. You had Scene, Lee. Some of them, they started in the, in the 70s, but the 80s, that's when, like the golden era. Yeah. So... I got one collaboration. So it just hit me, a moment of clarity one day. The other, not too long ago, about a couple of weeks ago, I said, I told my girl, what if I, I, I get collaborations with all these dudes, Butch 2? Because Butch 2, when I saw him in Queens last summer, he was like, yo, Coach, why wouldn't I do a collaboration, me and you? I guess he meant on the wall. And it made me feel good because these yeah. guys, I looked up to them. His name is bigger than mine in the, in the graffiti world. Sure. I used to look at that shit when I was a kid. Yeah. And I'm like, for them to tell me, for him to tell me to do a collaborate, that means people are recognizing me. They're yeah. starting to respect me even more now because all the stuff I've been putting a lot of work in. Yeah. And I said, I can do collaborations with legends. Yeah. Okay, a bunch of collaborations, about 12 of them, yeah. with big names. Absolutely. And I can do it because yeah. I, um, I have the charisma to do it. Sure. And I have... Trust me, I can do it. Yeah. Now I see and the approach work. Any, the work I put yeah. approach any high end gallery. Yeah. I bet you they'll do it. I tell you, I want to do a show with collaborations. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. On the trains, That's on the canvas, I do my name and then their name. My name, then like the one I'm doing with Riff right now, is called Passing the Torch. You know, all uh, the pieces have a name. Passing the Torch is because he's from the 1973, 72. And I'm from the 80s, so he's passing. I got a spray can. I'm going like this. He's yeah. passing it to me. Oh, I'm sweet. It. That's it's awesome. called passing the torch. So if I develop collaboration, it's going to take me a while to get all these guys. Yeah. But I can do it. Any high-end gallery will take on that. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. Nobody uh, haven't done that. Are you doing whole cards? Like on, on the canvas? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do whole cards. Okay, great. Yeah, on the canvas. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice. It's an idea I, I came up with. Yeah, no, I can't wait to see that. It's going to be awesome. It's going to take a while, but I can do it. All right. Yeah. Anything great. you Looking put your mind to, to you can do it. Yeah. Hmm. Right, Steve. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so you mentioned, you know, we talked about TDS already and, and how you joined up with them and all. Um, and I was wondering, was there a particular, like, initiation process uh, to joining that crew, or you, you no, know. it's it's not like a gang. It's yeah. for you know graffiti crews, people if they respect you, yeah, and you put a lot of work in, yeah, yeah. they'll approach you. They'll be like, yo, you should put up TDS for sure, or put up um OTB. Yo, yeah. you want to get down with us? 
yo, you right, yo, you to, you tore that train up, you tearing them shits up. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, people yeah, yeah. will respect once they respect you, they will approach you. Sure. You know, so I've never been the one that said, oh, can I be down with this crew? People always came to me. I've always had that charisma that people want to be, you know, like yo, put that, yo, put it up, Coles. Put yeah. this up, Coles. Yeah. Because all the work I put in. Yeah. I've destroyed. I'm telling you, because there was a time when, when they called me, Hickey and Ski, that's who yeah. caught me and put me on the Daily News. When they called me, the reason they wanted me so bad, and I'm going to tell you, how, I'm going to tell you the history of how they got me. So one day, I was motion tagging. You know what motion tagging is? The train's oh, moving and you oh, have to There you go. Motion tagging is when yeah. we would do it in peak hours. Okay. We would be on the that's train, crazy. everybody rush hour, and I'll yeah. pull out my fucking marker. I don't give a fuck who's a... And take a tag. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you was not bright enough, I wasn't really thinking. I didn't give a fuck. I was a young kid. Yeah. I took a tag, and there was undercovers in the train, and they uh, ended up being Hickey and Ski. Okay. So they, they didn't let they didn't take me to jail. Yeah. They gave me a summons or something, but they knew who I was, my yeah. name, because they yeah. see what I wrote. Oh, okay. So they had me on record now. Right. I do so one day I'm in the layups, in the Zuriga Avenue layups. It was me, uh -huh. B.O., and my best friend, Nooney Vale. Rest in peace. Um, And... They were fucking being greedy, because yeah. you know we was like in competition with, with each other. Sure. So we will get in the train, in the layups on Zuriga Avenue, and these motherfuckers want to get in front of me because I had the keys, and yeah. they want to bomb, you know, get the, the prime spots. Yeah, yeah, sure. So sure. I'm like, they were at the end of the car, and they were talking to some people. I said, Yo, who the fuck y'all talking to? They said, Yo, some writers. They they want to know what you write, what we write. So I said, Let me see. So I went to the end of the car. I looked. Those were fucking cops, Hickey and Ski. I said, what's the fuck? They said, don't run, Anthony. They do my, my whole name. Oh, wow. Don't run, Anthony, because of that day they called me motion tagging. Yeah. But I ran. We went down the pole, slid to the street, and we left. But I was working as a messenger, a fleet messenger service. I'm 16 years old. And they came the next day. Oh, wow. Can't you, Anthony, I'm sorry, but you got to come with us. They put the cuffs on me and took me to jail, <laughs> put me on the daily news. Because what happened was that I used to write messages to them. All over the city, uh, suck my uh, dick, Hickey uh, and Ski. Uh, uh, you would never catch me, ha, 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 all over the train yeah, stations. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they wanted me bad because I was like really taunting them, um, <laughs> um, provoking them. Yeah, yeah taunting yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah, they called me, they put my ass on the daily news. And called me one of the most prolific graffiti artists in the city. Yeah. You know, just because of my, all of my fucking shit that I was doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. wow. So, you knew that. Futura and Lee were doing bigger things. Did you just like, did the drugs kind of take over your life and you just like, right. Absolutely. Oh, it did, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, could Bush talk a little bit about the drugs coming in? Those so guys were see. older than me though. All them guys are older than me. Yeah. Futura, uh, I met him the other day, I took a picture with him. He's a good dude. He makes a lot of money for his work, especially in Japan. They love him in Japan. Huh. He's big in Japan. You got people like John One. I know him personally. Hours, he yeah. was a fucking toy. Yeah. But this motherfucker's making over 50 grand for a painting. One painting. And he doesn't wow. even do graffiti anymore. He does like more abstract, like splashy shit. And, yeah. But you get there. It comes to a point where you become a brand. You could just sign your name and charge a motherfucker five hundred dollars. Yeah. And that's what I'm working towards. Yeah. So so the drugs kind of came in, took over your life, and the the painting. Even though you saw what was happening. The, the drugs kind of was a priority, in a sense, in, in the sense that, you know, you, you know that scene and you see it, because the, 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 the movie Star Wars, mm -hmm. Star Wars, mm -hmm. did you watch it? Of it course, came? yeah, I've watched it. Yeah. Well, what was your reflection I watched all those. I was just, well, I was like, damn, they in the movies? I was like, that's my fucking culture, that's my that's shit, right. you know, like, that made me feel good, like, damn, yeah. they recognizing us. You fucking bombers, you know, we graffiti artists. They, yeah. <laughs> they're giving us respect. You know, all the movies, Beats Street, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know him personally. The kid, the star of the movie, Rocky. Rocky, yeah. I know him personally. He became a crackhead. Mm -hmm. He was from my na he's from my neighborhood, the Mitchell Projects over there. Yeah. yeah. I know him personally. He, he fucked up his whole career up. They wanted to do like a, another, he could have been big, but, you know, he start, he's coming in a limousine around the neighborhood. With a fucking gold crack pipe and smoking, you open the, the limousine window, smoking. <sighs> out the, yeah. He fucked his life up, but he's good now. But he, you know, he made a choice that he could have been. Who knows where he would have been now? Mm -hmm. But you know, choices. You know. Your choices, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I told you I went to California to get to 
get away from the scene. Yeah. You know, just because mm-hmm. I knew I was going to get in trouble. You know, yeah. so I just mm-hmm. went to L.A., man. Yeah. And laid low for eight years. Because I then came back. But, you know, I totally, I totally understand, man. So, uh, yeah. Um, any, anything else you want to say about your, your uh I, your I was featured in this magazine here. Oh, yeah. I didn't show you this. So this is called a Creative Fathers Magazine. This is the Spring Summer 2021 issue, mm-hmm. and I have a you know this little centerfold in there where I was featured, and you know it just makes me good that people will actually put my artwork in a magazine. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I have um a whole bunch of um other features in a couple of other magazines. And I have an, um, one that just came out this month. It's on, online. It's called a Do Funk magazine. Mm-hmm. And it just was dropped this month. It's an online magazine. And okay. I had to interview yeah. where they asked me 11 questions. And I uh, answered all the questions. You know. Yeah, that's cool. And you brought some po- the postcard? Right? Yeah, this is my bio. Oh, that's your bio. Oh, yeah, okay. this is my bio. Right. This okay, is where okay. my Instagram is. Sure. And this particular um, image on the back is one of my canvases. This is where I do my shirts. I, I sell some shirts. Yeah. And they have that image. And I still have that canvas. That's not for sale. Yeah. And it's just a, a short bio. And I actually brought this to give it to you. Oh, you can thank have you. It. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But um, for the most part, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm just working continuously. I paint every day. Yeah. Every single day I paint. Even if it's a half an hour, hour, I get some work in every day. Yeah. I have so many canvases that it's, I have a whole storage full of canvases. I don't sell as much as I, I want to. Sure. I sell some. Yeah. But not the way, like, people like these guys that I know that I grew up with, Heck. Yeah. You know, I, um, guys like Chris, RWK. This guy just sold out his, his whole fucking show the other day. Wow. I, I want to get to a point where when I do an yeah. exhibit, yeah. it sells before it even goes into the gallery. Yeah. 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 They yeah, got yeah. people like that, you yeah, know. I like so that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get there. Yeah. There's nothing that's gonna stop me. Only I can stop me. You know. So yeah, I want to get to that level. But you know, like I said, I'm I'm playing like I'm a formal catcher, but I have a name. Why not capitalize off my um, legacy? I did ride on trains. Yeah. You know, I, I'm part of the history. I did, you know, ride on trains with other legendary riders. I know these guys. Yeah. You know, I remember when they were just like me. Yeah. That's right. Not Absolutely. doing shit, making no money. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And they that's making right. big moves. Like they say, John won. Yeah. Dude's big, big money for his paintings. You know, girls like Toxic is my good friend of mine from my from my block. A yeah. one, he passed away. His work is worth a lot of money. You got um Keith. I know I met all them dudes. Keith Herring, Andy Warhol. I met all them dudes when I was in the graffiti days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who was all in that scene? <clears throat> right. But you know, I, I wish I would have knew. You know what I know now. Yeah. Who knows? That's right. But it's never it's never too late. I'm 55 years old right now. It's not too late. Yeah. Absolutely. Not at all. Not at all. You got the history. I'm still doing it. You still you got know? that history. That's yeah. what we're recording. I'm you got, capitalizing. You have, you have the history, and so you, you yeah. know, that's that's permanent. Yeah. yeah. And you can use it, you know, whatever you want to use it. But now's a good time to use it. I'll tell you that. I'll you know? use it, of course. Yeah, yeah. We really appreciate you telling us the the story. Uh, I think. Uh, Steve, I just want to thank you guys for this hundred thousand dollar check. This is cool. I like that. Hundred thousand. We, we get there. Hundred thousand. I like that. Hundred grand, I man. I'll we'll throw that in the in the, in the That'd bank. That'd be wonderful. It's weird. good, man. Yeah. Hundred grand. Um, I think Steve's gonna have those ending questions, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got a couple more questions. Okay. Uh, so um, this is uh, this is a question you already um, you know had mentioned like the the first the first uh train you did and all of that i was wondering do you have like a favorite uh train piece that you did um from back in the day one that sticks with you in your memory one of my favorite i got a whole car up top to bottom but the one that i really like enjoy is a, is a blockbuster that me and lk did mm. he was on the six line he was the king of the six line. line before i was okay yeah i used to look up to his shit and he used to go to high school with me and he even he was the one who taught me how to steal for money oh, okay okay yeah he taught me how to steal fucking buff friends and tight and all the big one and he took me to the he was like coach you want to make money you don't got to steal spray paint you know with uh, all i used to do is steal spray paint to write graffiti yeah yeah and one day he comes up to me tells me because he's a little older like two years older than me you want to make some money? We'll go to the rap. Well, how the fuck are we gonna make money stealing? What the fuck yeah. you talking about? Yeah. 
And he took me to the supermarket in, in Jersey, in Newark, and we stole fucking the buffering, the fucking Tylenol, and we took it to this place in Soundview. Yeah. This pharmacy, and they would buy it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was making money doing that shit, but if you call that money, but, you know, little little dude stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the yeah. things you did with him, that, that's oh, it was a whole cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a whole cart. L. It was a coast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the E started the L K because uh, his name was E L K A Y. Okay, okay. He yeah. destroyed the six. So I used to look up to his name. Right. Yeah. That's but that's like the one of my favorites. Yeah. With collaboration with L K. Sure. He's like little Corrado, too small, but he's like a legendary writer. Yeah. 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 Uh, were, were there like particular colors that you were drawn to back in the day and, or maybe are there particular colors you're drawn to now? Not necessarily, but purple, really purple. Yeah. Because of the majestic of it. Absolutely. Royalty. Purple um, in, in um, ancient times, you could not wear purple if you were a common folk. Yeah. Only royalty. When you was, if you was like in those days of Jesus, so they, when they put him in Jesus, mm -hmm. if you know anything about the Bible, when they took him in front of the, um, the court, they put him in a purple robe, and they said, you're king of the Jews. They put him in, only purple was signifying royalty. There was a royal color. It's not in, no, no more, but I use that in a lot of my pieces, royal, mm -hmm. yeah. purple, and I'm able okay. to explain why? Because I was King Coast back in 1983. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, a king yeah, of the yeah, six yeah, yeah. on the insides. Yeah. Right. And you know, everything has a, some kind of explanation. You know, all my yeah. art has titles. Yeah. And you have to be able because what I tell people, a lot of artists, they don't know, they don't understand that when you have art and if you want to sell art, if you're trying to get to the collectors I'm trying to get to, which are the intellectuals, wealthy ones that are intellectuals, they want to know, what's this called? Why? What were you feeling? Yeah. You know, you have to have a story because they're buying the story behind the art. Because yeah. you got guys that they have no story and they got no, you know, you got guys that are brilliant artists. You see them on 42nd every day. Chinese guys, they draw you in a minute. Yeah. But they're starving artists. They're selling their shit for $10. Yeah. Because they don't know how to articulate and, 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 communicate with another person and tell them this is what this means to me this is what I was feeling this is what my emotions were this is my perspective I call this piece um, like the one of the pieces I just recreated mm -hmm. I call it warrior of the iron horse and I, what I took I don't know if you saw it but what I did was I took um, a chariot yeah in the Romans you know, and then they have a shield. I put a number six train on it ah, instead of a shield. Yeah. And then instead of the spear, I took a, I put a spray can on him. Then I put a, a B-boy hat backwards. <laughs> and he's on the chariot, and he's holding on to the train instead of the horses. Yeah, yeah. So I call it the warrior of the iron horse because, you know, the, the trains are iron horse. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I call it. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. I changed that, that's, that that's concept. Really cool. yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah, I'll yeah, show yeah. it to you. It's, it's over there in my phone, but um, yeah. But you have to be able to sell yourself and sell your story. And people, I'm gonna give you one example, one quick example. I was at one art space doing an art show. They, you have to pay for wall space there. Yeah. And they did a panel discussion. You had to pay like a hundred, two hundred dollars for the panel discussion. Be part of it, a hundred dollars. And it was five of us. I went to that. Right. That's where I met you. I don't know if you was in this particular. I did more than one panel, but maybe oh, might no, be the no, same one. Was, I don't know. I did two so, panels at one space. Hmm? I have more than one, yeah, no, I like two or three. Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, I like two or three. So, okay, right. so we had a panel, this guy was five of us. Yeah. So all the artists that were on this panel were all college educated. Okay. Yeah. They all went to art school, except me. Yeah. And what's funny about it is that Sophocles, he's the curator from Star Shows, mm. the one I started doing shows with. Yeah. Coach, you're first. And I'm like, this motherfucker. He wants me to go first so they could build on what I say. But it's okay. I do it. I'm all for it. I'm ready. I was born for this. Yeah. So I started speaking, and I tell them I'm not, um, I didn't go to college for art. I didn't, wasn't educated in that. Uh, I never finished college, but I'm from the school of hard knocks. Yeah. I'm a self-taught artist. I ran from the cops. I had them clapping. The whole audience was clapping. So after I finished talking, I told him I was on drugs for, for years. 
you know, however I, I made that transition, I used this as therapy, and people were like really clapping, and after they all spoke, they all talked about their credentials, about this college and this. After, they, after we finished the panel discussion, there was a couple, and they went, where's his work I see? I was watching it from the corner of my eye, where's his work at? Yeah. And they went to my paintings, I had two on the wall, two little ones, and I just started doing my shows. Yeah. And I went over there to them. I said, you like this? I said, this is your stuff. I said, yeah. How much you want for that? I said, $500. They were small ones. Yeah. They bought both of them. They said, we love your story. Yeah. <clears throat> How you overcame drugs and, and you're doing art. They bought it. They're from Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they took those paintings back to Australia. They still communicate with me. They can't come over here because they probably would have bought more off me because um, of the pandemic and stuff or pandemic. Um, so yeah, I'm the only one who sold paintings that day. That was my, my the moral of what I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. That you have to have a story. People buy stories. You For could sure. be the most brilliant artist, but you don't know how to articulate and tell people why you did that. They don't want that. They want a story. They want the story that comes with it. Yeah. You have to be able to articulate that. Absolutely. And I try to teach the younger artists that. I tell them, you know, you have to have a story behind it. That's why people want a title. You got to title your painting. Why, why you named it that? And you got to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was funny you know, how it is. And I learned that. I learned that, that. That's the way I learned that. That people buy stories. Mm -hmm. Besides yeah. the art. It has to have something. And people, once you have a good story, people gravitate towards that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I I think I have two more questions. Um, Kurt, do you have any questions before I ask my final two questions? Uh, right now I don't, but I'm like... Okay. So, uh, here's a question for you, which might be hard to put into words. Um, but, uh, so, whenever you're doing, um, whenever kind of you're in your space where you're creating um, and, you know, doing art, what are some of the, like, feelings or sensations you have when you're, like, fully in the zone? That's funny, because, you know, um, usually what I do is I put on different types of frequency music. Okay, yeah. So I, I'll put um, creative frequency uh, music. Yeah. Or I might put motivational speech sure. music. I'm always putting something that's going to provoke thought in me. Yeah. And once I'm in that zone, that's like, I don't want to be bothered. I put my phone on airplane mode. Okay, yeah. I don't want to be bothered. You can't talk to me because some people, they want to talk to you. I've had that experience with a couple of people because we live in a house, two-story house where I live at. In yeah. my yard, I converted it into a studio. Ah. Uh. Like this thing with a tent. And I brought everything down there and... And I just go in there and I just create my art. I just, once I'm in that zone, I don't want to be bothered. Yeah. But that's what motivates me, though, the music, the the, the frequency, the the higher vibration music. Yeah. I put all those on YouTube and yeah. it puts me in that zone. It makes me more creative. What's the, what's the longest amount of time that you've like been in that zone, do you know? See, I got a lot of things going on. It's not just art that I do. Sure. I'm not a full-time artist oh, yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working towards that. Yeah. Um, because by trade I'm a drug counselor. Sure. I went to school, got my KSAC T. I don't know how much you know about you know that stuff, but I have my T. KSAC T means Certified Cost Substance Use Counselor in training. Sure. You have sure. to have three, six thousand hours exactly. on the job before you drop the T and become a fool and you get more money. Sure. But I'm not working in the field now because of the pandemic. I used to visit clients at their houses yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and they let me go. But anyway, but um, what was the question again? Oh, so, um, like the longest amount of time that you've like been in the, oh, in the zone? In the zone. For yeah. the most part, I, I, I do like half an hour. Because okay, I have okay. other things going. That's what, I was, yeah. that's what I was going. Sure. I'm not full-time art yet. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working towards that. And I'm getting closer and closer every day. I'm confident I'm manifesting that. Yeah. But I'm going to know when it's time for me to, you know what, I'm going to stop this and, and do this full time. Yeah, for but sure. I, I multitask. I got my son because his mother passed away. Mm. And I got my son, you know, I'm a single parent. Yeah. I, I got a girl. She's in Florida. He knows her. She's an artist. Sure. But um, that's not his mom. Yeah, yeah. So I take him to school. He's, he just turned 11. And I 
got a lot of things going on, you know, in Absolutely. life. It's not just art. I got other responsibilities. So you just got to find whatever time you can to, to do Yeah, yeah. Whatever. So for yeah. the most part, I do it usually early in the morning. Okay, yeah, yeah. Early. Yeah. When everybody else is asleep and all that stuff, I get up early. And I... So how, how does it feel to get a certificate of, 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 of merit from the Bronx Borough President? That was awesome, man. That's like... I was like, is my art going to be worth more now? If that's part of my resume, it yeah. is going to be worth more. Yes, absolutely. Well, this interview here is going to make my art worth more. Absolutely. It is. Um, and it feels good when you when you reached out to me and told me about this. I felt good when you explained it to me that it's going to be for public record. I like that because somebody wants to research who the hell I am, they can come here yeah. to the Bronx Historical Society and who's close? Can I reach her? Yeah, type it in or whatever right they do, you guys do. And it is what it is. And, and my stuff is the museum already. And I've been on TV a couple of times. And I've been in magazines. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting closer and closer, man. Eventually, I'm going to be able to sign my name and charge $500, $1,000. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. The tag is $200. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the tag I'm, won't you know, be free. But, yeah. 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 I'm, you know, I'm in the process of doing a lot of things. I'm working progress. I guess we all are to yeah, a certain extent. For sure. Yeah. Um, so my final question for you is, uh, uh, this is kind of taking it back to, uh, back to the Bronx in general. Um, but what does the Bronx represent to you? The Bronx for me is home. It's, it's the Bronx is home. It's the birthplace of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the birthplace of a lot of things, you know, but for the most part, the biggest one that I can really sticks out of my mind is hip hop. And, you know, I was there, I was part of that movement and it represents, you know, my upbringing, my childhood, um, my ups, my downs, yeah. you know, my drug addictions, you know, it represents it's home. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's home. You know, it makes me who I am. You know, like I said before earlier, the harder your struggle, the hard, higher your quality, because a lot of guys I grew up with, they either in prison, they're in jail, or dead, yeah. or they're still on drugs. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I'm one of the fortunate. I've overcome yeah. a lot of things, and it's going on seven years. I'm clean. Yeah, I don't mess around. I never smoked cigarettes, so yeah. I don't. I never had to worry about cigarettes. Sure. I never smoked cigarette in my life. None of us, my mom, my pops, my sister, none of us smoked cigarettes. Yeah, because I always felt like, does that get you high? No. I want that shit. So yeah. I never got into that. Yeah. You know, but you know, for thirty years of drugs to going on seven years clean, I'm, yeah. you know, I've come a long way and then, you know the saga continues. Absolutely. My story continues to be unfolding. Absolutely. Well said, well said. Thank you so much, Coast. Yeah. Appreciate it. And so um this book you wanna um you do want me to tag, tag it for the library. Absolutely. So it could be uh Collection. What's this? Let's see. Paper. Let's see. Paper. Let me see something first before we start recording. Make sure this is right and good. Oh, yeah, good. Good. All right. Let me read that. Um, I'll tell you right now. I can start now. You get it. Go. Dry, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Dry, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna press end on the recording now. Yeah, let it dry for a while.